Hi guys, this is Zainab Zaytun. In this video, I'll be explaining the last part of statistics for grade 9. So if you didn't see the first two parts, check my previous videos. The objective of this part is to represent statistical data on a bar graph and on a circular diagram. In the previous video, you learned how to construct the polygon of frequencies like the one you see here. So this is how a bar graph uh, looks like. This is another way of representing a statistical data other than the polygons that we took in the previous videos. This uh, the bar graph is usually used to represent frequency of qualitative data, but can still be used for quantitative data for sure. Uh, remember that qualitative data are uh, data that can't be measurable, like the one we have here in this diagram. So this diagram represents a study that we did on a group of people to uh, study the kind of pet they own. So the character here is the kind of pet, and the frequency is the number of people that own uh, a certain pet. So here we have a qualitative character, as you see, because uh, they are not number. Um, so how do we read a bar graph? It's pretty similar to the way of reading a polygon. So for the rabbit, for example, the frequency is 4. For the dog, the frequency of 8. Now, what's the frequency of cats? You should know that it's 11. This means that 11 people own cats. And for dogs, this means that eight people own dogs, and so on. Now let's look closer at the bar graph to know how to construct it. Look at each bar. What can you notice? What's, what's in common between them? You can notice that they all have the same width. So when constructing the bars of the bar graph, you should be careful to choose the same width. So for example, if you chose the width of, this, of the first bar to be 2 cm, then it should be 2 cm for all the other bars. The second thing, what do you notice about the space between each two bars? You should notice that it's the same. Also, you can choose uh, the width of the space to be whatever you want on one condition to keep it the same between any two bars. So you should leave the same space between any two bars and each bar should ha and all the bars should have the same width. Now, the same note as, the, as for the polygon, you should choose a convenient scale for the y-axis. Here, in the, in the, for the bar graph, there is no scale for the x-axis. You just put the values under each bar. If the character is quantitative, then you should put them in increasing order for sure. If it's qualitative, like in this case, the order doesn't matter. And now, as in the previous video, you should be able to transform a bar graph into a table and vice versa. Let's start with the first example. We're using the same data we used to construct a polygon in the previous video. So we're using the same one, so read it quickly. You have the grades and the frequency. The question is to construct a bar graph of frequencies. Now pause the video and try to construct the bar graph by yourself. First, you should choose a convenient scale for the y-axis. Notice the frequencies are 1, 3, and 4 only. So, 1 cm or 1 unit on the y-axis should correspond to a frequency of 1. This would be good. Now, for the x-axis, as we said, there is no scale. So, you just put the grades uh, in increasing order 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 18, and 20. So now I'm hiding the bars. I'll just show the axes. So this is how we place them. The frequency on the y-axis is one unit for, for a frequency of one, while on the x-axis, which corresponds to grades, we only place them in increasing order. So you cannot see here we're jumping from 11 to 12, then from 12 to 16. Now you draw the bar graphs. You choose any width you want for the bars. And one condition that the width of all the bars should be the same and the space between each two bars also should be the same. And how do we know the length of the bar? So for 8, the frequency of 1, so it should hit the horizontal line passing through 1. For 9, the frequency is 3, so it should be of length 3. Say for 10, it's of frequency 4, so it should be of length 4 and so on. You're not forced to uh, draw these uh, horizontal lines. 
It's just for you if you feel that they are helpful. Now this exercise is taken from Brilliant Guide. The following bar graph represents the results of a certain survey. Always when you have a graph or any diagram, take your time to read it carefully. So pause the video and read it carefully. The first question calculate the total frequency. Since the total frequency is not given, then it would be the sum of all the frequencies. Can you get the frequency of each value? Yes, from this diagram, you have all the values and the frequency of each value. So the frequency of 1 is 2, the frequency of 2 is 3, as we did before. So get the frequency of each value and sum them up. So the total frequency would be 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3, plus 8, plus 4, which will give you 25. The second part is to translate the graph into a table showing the frequencies, relative frequencies in percentage and increasing cumulative frequencies. So you have three things to put in the table and for sure you always have the first row for the character. The character in this, um, uh, in this graph is the grades. So, the tab so your table should have four rows. So also pause the video and try to construct it by yourself. So this should be your table that you will fill. I'll start by filling the grades. I can get the grades from here. So they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This was very simple. Now for the frequency, also since the bar graph uh, represents the frequency, so I can also get them from here, as I did in the previous part. So for 1 it's 2, for 2 it's 3, I won't repeat it, so also put them here. And the total frequency is 25, using part 1. Now the relative frequency in percentage, recall that it's the frequency over the total frequency times 100. So for this, for this value, it's 2 over 25, times 100 and so on. I'm doing these two uh, very quickly because we did a lot of them in the previous videos. Uh, also the total for the relative frequency in percentage is, uh, is 100 and to check it just add these to be sure that you did them correctly. Now also for the increasing cumulative frequency we did a lot of it. For the first one you drop the, the same frequency which is 2. For the second one you add 2 plus 3, you get 5, and so on. And there is no total. So that's all you need to know about uh, the bar graphs. Now, um, you'll be learning how to construct pie charts or circular diagram. This is also another way of representing statistical data. This one is also uh, often used to uh, represent qualitative data, but you can also use it for quantitative data. Uh, the diagram consists of dividing a disk into sectors with angles at the center are proportional to the frequencies. So suppose, for example, that we did a study on the age of uh, students in a certain grade 9 class and we had this result. We represented the results in a circular diagram or pie chart. So, for example, you can know from this chart that most of the students are 14 years old because the central angle of this sector is the greatest and for example that the least of the students are 16 uh, years old since the central angle of this sector is the uh, smallest so that's what what we mean by proportional now how do you find this central angle to be able to construct this pie chart by ourselves now suppose that we have this data we're still using the same data and you're asked to draw the circular diagram corresponding to the above data. First, you need to find the central angles. So logically, if you want to find the central angle for grade 8, then we will do this cross multiplication. You know that the, a full circle corresponds to 360 degrees, right? So 360 degrees, which is a full circle, corresponds to the total frequency, which is 20. Now we want to know how much corresponds to 1, because the frequency of 8 is 1. So the central angle of grade 8 would be 360 times 1 over 20, which will give you 18 degrees. Now since 1 corresponds to the frequency of 8, 20 corresponds to the total frequency, 
and you have 360 degrees, which is the measurement of a full circle, then we can deduce the rule. In order to get the central angle of any value, it would be the frequency over the total frequency times the 360. So this is how you would find the central angle. So for example, if you want to find the central angle of 11, try to apply this rule. It would be the frequency, which is 3, over the, tot over the total frequency, which is 20, times 360, and so on. Now notice, what does this remind you of? Frequency over total frequency. It's the relative frequency. So the, so the central angle is frequency over total frequency times 360, and it's also the relative frequency times 360. Now, 360 can be written as 3.6 times 100, right? And if you have 100 times relative frequency, you will get relative frequency in percentage. So you can use one, uh, any one of these three rules because they are all the same. If you, if you have the frequency in the table, then you use this form. If you have the relative frequency, you will use this. If you have relative frequency in percentage, you will use this form. Now I'll do application on this. So this is an example. It's also taken from the Brilliant Guide. So this is also the same data. Draw the circular diagram corresponding to the above data. The first thing to think about when you're constructing the pie chart or the circular diagram is to find the central angle for each value. So apply this rule because you have the frequency. We will apply the first rule here. So for the first one, it's 1 over 20 times 360, which will give you 18 degrees. The central angle for grade 9 is 3 over 20 times 360, which will give you 54. Do the same for all the other grades by yourself. You should get these values. So now we know the central angle of each value. We can construct the circle. So for the grade 8, we need to draw a sector from the circle that has, that has a central angle of 18 degrees. So first to draw any circle you want of any radius, the first step is to, to draw any radius. Now the second step is to draw an angle of 18 degrees, a central angle of 18 degrees. You put your protractor, uh, the center of your protractor on the center of the circle and you measure 18 degrees. So this would be the sector for grade 8 and you write here grade 8. Now for the grade 9, the central angle is 54. So again, you put your protractor on this radius now. The center of the protractor again should be on the center of the circle and you measure an angle of 45 degrees. So here you go, this sector corresponds to the grade 9. And you keep doing the same. So for grade 10, you measure an angle of 72 degrees and you draw the sector and you write grade 10 until you get this shape. That's all for this chapter. Uh, however, I'll be solving uh, two or three exercises on the uh, part two and the three of this chapter because we didn't solve enough exercises. So wait for it. Thanks for watching.